here's a good resource right here. This is some pretty decent punk wood. So punk wood I'm gonna be using to char instead of charring cotton. I like to char natural material. So what I'm looking for is this good spongy consistency. This wood is perfect for making char and I wanna keep it as chunky as possible. Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Great Bird of Green Beret. Just wanted to take a minute and welcome you back to the series. Hope you're enjoying it. If you want to get a copy of all the gear that I use throughout this series, you can get a free downloadable packing list. I'll put that link in the description below. Also, if you're enjoying this series and you want to get the full film commercial free and all together, not broken up over the next several weeks, you can purchase the film still from my website. You can stream it. You can get it on your very own USB thumb drive, which is pretty handy. Replaces the download or you can get it on a three disc DVD set. Highly recommend you add those so that you can get the full experience of watching everything together. If you like this series, you like the film, I'd encourage you to get my book. Everything that you see me do in the Into the Woods series and a heck of a lot more is all packed inside this book. And you can get this from my website, you can get it on Amazon. I'll put all the links in the description below. Click those get the film, get the book, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Into the Woods. This is some dog fennel here and some broom's edge right up there. So both of those are good resources that I was looking for for tinder here in this area. Make a really good, what's called a grass or a twig bundle. So the dog fennel I can collect up and what I like to do is, when I'm doing tinder bundles, I'm always thinking that coarse, medium, fine. So the innermost layer that's going to accept that heat source, you know, to complete that fire triangle, air provided for free, uh, is, is going to be my most fine material. So all those dried flower tops for this dog fennel are going to be that portion. And for a fair weather tinder bundle, I'm thinking about something that's about the size of a softball you know if you put your your fingertips together like that size is fair weather and twice as much at least for a less than good weather tinder bundle but of course it's made up of fine medium and coarse material so this is my fine material up top here what i like about dried flower tops as well and having them as my center you know my fine material is when they're dry like this and they've got these little tiny little flower heads that are poked out. That's all surface area to catch a spark and it's readily combustible. The other thing I like is the cuticle of land plants that it keeps moisture from evaporating off of them and allows them to live on land. That cuticle is very, very thin and kind of worn away on these dried flower tops. And what we'll, I'll show you on the um, broom's edge which will be the more coarse material that I'm using. Uh, I'll show you that waxy cuticle and talk to you a little bit about why that's not a good, a good idea to have that directly as the acceptor of the heat source. Uh, you want something that doesn't have a cuticle or is a very dry like this. So this is a great resource that I'll collect some of and I can always come back and get more if I need it for subsequent fires. So that's kind of my the flower tops, the headed out portion is kind of my fine material and my medium material is kind of the stalks that that comes on. So we're, we have the makings of, of the beginning of a good tinder bundle right here. And this broom's edge is what I'm looking for here. So this grows all over the U.S. and it's a really good resource in the winter because that's when it's dry and when it's ready to go. Uh, but it, it heads out in these seed heads and flower heads. Uh, so you actually get a really decent uh, bit of fine material. You also have a medium material. If you look at the smaller stems that those are coming off of, that's kind of your medium material. And then you have your coarse material in this portion, which is the main part of the stem. Uh, and that main part of the stem is a good example of a waxy cuticle on a land plant. You can kind of probably see how that's shimmering 
and you can feel it. It feels waxy. It feels like straw. Uh, so the reason that a, a plant-based material that has a cuticle is only suitable for coarse is because it's not readily going to accept the spark from something like a ferrocerium rod. Uh, it won't accept solar all that well. You need to get up here where it's headed out and that cuticle is kind of worn away and it's a lot smaller, more finely processed material. Uh, so grasses, dried grasses are typically a coarse material because they have a cuticle. Uh, this is a great example of that. Pine needles is another example of something that has a cuticle that is difficult to start with something like a ferrocerium rod. If you have open flame, like lighter or matches, then yes, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can get that going. But what happens is it's, it's basically a wax. So that wax has to be melted into a liquid before it's going to ignite. All right? a, a, the solid wax doesn't actually burn. It's, the, it's once it's liquefied. So it takes more heat to get it liquefied to then combust. So uh, a ferro rod spark does not last long enough to really make that happen. So that's why when you're making your tinder bundles, if you're having problems, you know, with multiple strikes on a ferro rod and it's still not taken, chances are you're using something with a cuticle. Uh, and that needs to be a coarse material on the outside of something that's more suitable to accept a spark that doesn't have a cuticle. Like up here at the very top. So when I'm collecting, these actually make their own tinder bundle, their own grass bundle, if you put them together. So I'm gonna get a few of these and they grow in bunches like this. So one bunch will typically give you all that you need. And I'll put those together, cut a few stems. Gather those up. I'm making a grass bundle at this point. This is just another way to arrange your tinder into a tinder bundle. Let's get one more. There we go. So for this, I've got all my larger stems here at the back. And for the fair weather, if I was going to keep this just like this, I would want the stem base to be basically the okay sign. Fingers wrapped around with your fingertips touching. For worse weather, I'd want it to be at least twice as large. But for this one, the way that I kind of arrange this is I've got all my fine material out here at the end. All my coarse is on this end. So what I want to do is have that coarse material end up on the back side. So instead of making a twig bundle, I can make a bird's nest completely out of this because I've got fine material, medium material, and coarse material all together. I start at the fine end, start folding them in on themselves, and I keep those towards the center, and I start wrapping as the stem gets longer and longer, or thicker and thicker, that portion's going to the outside of the bundle. So now I've just made basically a bird's nest tinder bundle that I can place an ember in, place a coal in or just hit it with a ferrocerium rod. But anytime I need to place something inside there that's, that's fine material with medium material mixed in, coarse material on the outside. So that is a very simple bird's nest tinder bundle in and of itself with just one source. So this is an outstanding resource to learn. And like I said, it's all over the United States. So this is Broom's Edge, uh, a lot of different versions of it. I think this particular one is Blue Stem. Uh, it'll get little tufts of blue grass coming out from the bottom. Uh, and that's the new stuff. This stuff is from last year. Perfect tender resource and you can find it up out of the snow uh, even in the winter. Good one to learn. I'm going to hold on to that one. Here's a good resource right here. This is some pretty decent punk wood. Yeah, that's pretty good. So punk wood I'm gonna be using to char. Instead of charring cotton, I like to char natural material. 
So what I'm looking for is this good spongy consistency. This wood is perfect for making char and I want to keep it as chunky as possible. So this goes back to that possum mentality is I know this is here because I'm standing at it. I don't know what it's going to be or what's going to be available where I'm going to end up for the night. So, you know, that possum mentality, gathering up things, filling up things as you go, never passing resources. It's just a good habit to get into. You're walking by it anyway. And this is still a little wet, but I can lay this out in the sun and it'll be dry. Or I could just char it while it's wet. Um, just takes a lot more fuel that way. But I'm gonna collect up some of this. So before I've got my first fire, I'm already setting up for my next fire because the resource is available right here. The stuff that's still a little bit hard, I don't want that. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna hold on to that. Put that in my tinder pouch. It's a good idea to get a tinder pouch that you can hang kind of off your belt. So as soon as you get into the wood line, you can start stuffing things in it. I'm gonna put that in there. And I'll just leave that on top so if I find some more resources I can get to it quick and throw it in there. So that's punk wood. Again, I'm using that to char instead of charring cotton. Don't do char cloth. Do charred natural tinder because it's everywhere. That looks pretty good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look here. Yeah, so look at all this sap right here. All this white right here, that's where the tree's been injured. It's been pumping sap there to recoat that and protect it from bacteria. That is a mother load of sap right there. There's a little more up here, but not like this is. This is all consolidated in one place. It'll be easy to get off. I can probably pull it off by hand because it's so warm. Yeah. So that is an outstanding resource for fire, as far as for tinder. Uh, this'll take a spark, burn when it's wet. So wet conditions, this'll take it. I can also make some uh, pitch glue out of this, pine pitch glue. Uh, so it's a great resource for that. And I love it for a couple of reasons for first aid and medical. Uh, so this pine sap is a natural antiseptic. It's already kind of soft, uh, so I can soften it a little more. If I have cuts or abrasions or something to that effect, this is almost like nature's second skin uh, with a little bit of, of uh, antiseptic in it. So I can actually coat that wound with that sap. It has antiseptic qualities that'll actually kill some of the, uh, the bugs and the germs in there. Uh, to prevent infection, but it'll also cover that and protect it from the environment. So it's great for that. Uh, dental wise, this is great if you have a filling that you lose when you're in the field. You can take some of this pine pitch out and it's nice and pliable. And you can pack that down into that tooth where that, that filling was lost and that'll protect it from the environment and you can walk your way out. A lot of times, you know, dental when you're out in the woods is a real problem. Uh, so it's kind of like your nature's dental medic kit is this right here. So outstanding resource, no way I would ever pass this up. Uh, maybe I'll leave a little bit of that on because I don't need it all, but I know where this is. Uh, if I need more, I can get it, but I'll save some for the next woodsman or woodswoman, woods person that comes through. Oh yeah, this is a, a really good find right there. Oh yeah. Oh wow. You know, just hanging off of there. I'm gonna collect that. Sometimes in the absence of fat wood, this might work. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, let me take a little more of that. Rest of it's pretty hard, but you could get off with your saw or with a knife, but I've got that other ball, so I don't really need that much, but that is prime right there. Mm, smells good too. 
quite a bit of it on here. Good Lord. Sometimes you can't help yourself. It's a, it's too good a resource to pack out or to pass up, but I am going to leave quite a bit on it there because the tree does need it for protection or it wouldn't be putting it out. So I won't take it all, but I will take some. It'll make more. Good find. A lot of dead pines through here, so aside from sap, you know, I might be able to find some fatwood around here, which is really what I'm going for right now. And some of these have fallen down pretty recently, so they haven't started, the sapwood hasn't decomposed away yet. Yeah. 